Hello and welcome to Ode to Games. I'm Kevin Valleen, joined alongside Zach Ross. How you doing, Zach? I'm fantastic. I'm and we got Logan Plant in the same room. <laughs> with Logan. Hey, Zach. Whoa, well, this is weird. This is really weird. We haven't done this in a long time. We haven't done this since, oh boy, early 2020. I think we were together at some point. But even at that point, we were mostly remote. I know. Yeah, We've gotten kind of so time. used to being apart. Yeah, we have been doing this remote for a long together. time. Any very early listeners, remember we we were in the same room. It wasn't video, but we were all in the same room yeah. for uh, the first, yeah. what, 30-something episodes? Like, yeah. Something? No, I think gone. that... Is it less I don't than think that? so. Because we started in February, and you graduated in May, so it was like uh, 12 episodes. <laughs> three months. It was oh, not yeah. very long. It was some. <laughs> yeah, it was some. It was a lot longer than that. Anyways... Uh, WarioWare, get it together, is out, and both of you have been playing it. What are your thoughts on it so far in its first week? Yeah, how do you say Wario? How do you guys pronounce it? Okay, we were, <laughs> we, we had the beginnings of this debate, and then Logan wanted to save it for the podcast. I say Wario, like war. <laughs> Uh-huh. I think, I think I Kevin too. will agree with me that he Wario. also says Wario. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but do you say Morio? No, they're different. <laughs> it's totally Wario. <laughs> but M-A-R is Mar and W-A-R is War. Dude, you just got to listen to how he says his own name. Wow. Wario. Wow. Huh. It, yeah. Look, it's just easier for me to say Wario. It's faster for me. Mm-hmm. Wah. Well, there, there's some Wario. people out there that say Mario. Yeah, I'm not one of those people. Yeah, that's people. weird. That's not yeah. acceptable. Mario and Wario. What about <laughs> Wario and Morio? I'm going to start doing that. That's chaotic evil. But anyways. anyways uh, yeah, how's WarioWare? Uh, WarioWare <laughs> is great. I I really, really love it. Um, I put so much time into the demo. I was so ready for the full version of this thing to come out. And I've played it probably 10 hours in the last week. Played the whole story mode. And it, it only takes about two, a little over two hours to finish. It's really just an avenue to unlock all the characters. Every level you do, you get two or three more characters and a new set of micro games that are in one of the game's themes. And some really cool cutscenes, really fun animation style where the characters are like hand drawn 2D, but then like the backdrops look like realistic real world. So you got like Wario sitting in this like real life office building and it just looks really funny. So the cutscenes are funny. All the characters are just crazy. There are definite tiers of characters. Some are so much better than others. That's what which I've heard. I, I, think it's, I think it's fun. I think it's fun when you mix it up and you know that it's kind of a grab bag that you could get some total crap or you could get someone really good. So I don't, I don't mind that part of it. And then there are modes where you get to pick your roster so you can just pick the best characters. But yeah, I'm really into it. And then Zach was over today trying out a lot of the multiplayer stuff. Yeah, the multiplayer stuff is unexpectedly chock full of a lot of new options. So we played the demo uh, not too long ago and I was really into it, but there wasn't a lot of content offered in the demo. And I wasn't expecting so much content to be added after release. Um, we went in and we did we did the regular working together to see how far we can get story mode kind of stuff. But then we really dove in and tried out the different micro mini game, micro game kind of battles, uh, all the different kinds of I don't even know how what you would call them. This game is a little party weird modes, because it's called yeah, yeah party, because the mini games are called micro games and there's like these layers of games where you're playing like there's this one where you have to get a ball into uh, a goal and then the person who gets the ball into the goal gets sucked into a micro game and then the person who's outside of the micro game is trying to mess with the box that you're inside. So it's kind of, it's very confusing. Oh, yeah, but there's it gets layers meta. of games. But there's all these different party games that are included with WarioWare, and they they were all so fun. Like there wasn't any that I that I didn't have fun playing with Logan. Yeah, there's there's a mode where you take turns inside the TV that's on screen doing a micro game, while the people on the outside of the TV are using these pumps to blow up a balloon, and whoever's inside the TV when the balloon finally bursts is is the loser. So you're trying to complete your micro game as fast possible to get out of the tv oh, so okay. then you're working on the balloon. and it's it's really fun really crazy we uh, my girlfriend also joined us for that one so we were doing it with three people two people were blowing up the balloon one person was inside trying to get out completing their micro game and then there's <laughs> our favorite one is 
cooperative but also competitive and it's it's this mode where you are working together on the same micro game but then there's like this benevolent god who decides who contributed more oh. within that micro game after you complete is it, it. all so like really like, arbitrary sometimes or? it's sometimes really it's arbitrary you- he, sometimes you just get screwed because you could do the whole work, but some small detail where he was touching something the whole time means he got, he gets the point. And it got to the point where if they had a hot start, you would just sabotage the mini game so no one would get a point. Yeah. And we, we were doing that for a while, and it was seemingly going good. To where if Logan got, you know, started off really strong, I was able to stop us from actually winning the mini game. But after a while, I started losing points for sabotaging mini game. You yeah, it's really so you have to have right a fine line of you kind of have to not seem like you're sabotaging while you're sabotaging. Yeah, I think the difference is in the first few ones that he did that in, it was you weren't actively making us lose. You just were keeping me from doing the goal to get us to win. But then in some of the other ones, it was yeah. like your character was actually dying on screen or you were breaking something you weren't supposed to break actively. So it's like if you did something that made the game enter an automatic fail, it would take a point away from you. Okay. But if you just somehow stalled the other person <laughs> until time ran out, then no one was punished. But that mode was just really funny because sometimes the lines are really cool. Like if there's three enemies on screen and Zach shoots two and I shoot one, he gets the point. But then sometimes it's like, I totally felt like I was going to get the point. Like I contributed more. And then you just see like the god turn to Zach and award his character the star. And you're like, why did that just happen? And it's just hysterical when it happens. So I think that was the best yeah, I think party was, mode. That was my, by far my favorite. One of the ones we d- we skipped the instructions. We didn't really understand. It's like a Chinese checkers. If you're trying to create triangles on this board and you can place pins after you, you win these micro yeah. games. And I think that it had unique micro games, did it not? It did, yeah. There yeah, were some, some of these games party games the micro games aren't even story mode or what have you. So that's really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, so that's just the the multiplayer, like the it's called the variety pack. The just the story mode and the mission mode. There's probably over a hundred hours of content there if you wanted to do everything that you can do. Like it's it's ridiculous. So basically there's there's these challenges, basically achievements, where on every level, and there's like 15 levels in the game, you it wants you to score like over 30 with a party that you choose the characters, and then over 45 of everybody. So on every level, you have to score 45 points with all, like, 21 characters, about half of which are not very good. So that, that that alone will take a while. There's very specific challenges per micro game. Then there's this entire equipment mechanic. They're called prezies. And with all the money you're earning throughout WarioWare, you can go and unlock these presents to give the characters, and giving them presents levels them up. When you level them up, you unlock more cosmetic options. You can change what color their outfit is. You can get some concept art, a couple other things. But also what it does is it upgrades their base statistic for the online mode, which is called Wario Cup. And what that is, is it's a weekly rotating challenge that you do. And we're, we're on week two now. So the first week was, it was um, 9 Volt, the skateboarding yo-yo kid who just goes back and forth and you just throw the yo-yo up in the air and he's one of the worst characters in the game. He is terrible. But it was 34 curated micro games and you just had to score as best as possible. And they were on max speed. So it was really hard. So if you want to kind of get a leg up, you can invest in Prezi's to give to 9 Volt so his base score levels up because everyone's base score starts at 100. But then if you go in and give him a bunch of presents to level him up to say level 30 then his base score will upgrade to like 120. So now per micro game, because you spent the time grinding and investing in that character, he will now be worth more points to you in the Wario Cup online mode. So it's kind of interesting that if you're just a really, really good player, you don't have to worry about that at all. And you can just storm into the Wario Cup and score really well. But if you maybe want to get a leg up on some of the players online who might be a little better than you, then you can go and take the time to level up the character's And now this week's challenge is you pick five characters from the entire roster, whoever you want, and compete in a rotating random selection of minigames. So I've spent the last week upgrading my characters to get them just a few more points. So I'm just squeezing out a couple more points per micro game with them. Um, And I've gotten in, there's A, B, C, D, and E tier, and you get more money if you get in a higher tier. 
um, for the online mode, and I've gotten in the week so far, both through grinding and just through trying it over and over again to get high score. But that's really fun, and there's going to be a new challenge every week for like a year. So that's going to be something to come back to and do. But yeah, there's just a lot of content here, and it's all really good. How's it stacking up with the rest of the WarioWare games that you've played? I think it's my favorite one. Really? I, I do. I really like controlling the characters. I, I think that, like we talked about just with the demo, just the variety that it gives. Uh, uh, what character am I going to get and what game am I going to play? You just never know what's coming. And it just leads to kind of funnier stuff happening. Like when you get a really a character on a minigame they are really not suited for, it's just hilarious, especially in multiplayer, to watch what happens. So... Yeah, I, th I think it's really good. The number of micro games is a little lower than WarioWare Gold, but that had the most in the franchise, so we were a little spoiled by the last entry. But what is here is really good, and I really like all the characters, and co-op is a first in the series, and it's just super fun to play with people. And the Wario Cup is, I think, the series' first online ever, so it, it just has a bunch that I think is going to make it last longer than the other WarioWares. Did you... Uh... Yeah, did the other WarioWare's have a bunch of like online features like 3DS? No, like... no, it didn't. It had missions. It had a lot of content. It didn't really have on. Okay. It didn't really have online like that. So, but yeah, so I'm I'm excited to keep going away, keep doing the weekly challenge, and I I want to 100 percent it. I don't think I ever will. There's way too much, but I'm gonna put a lot of time into it. Did you pick it up physical or digital? I ended up digital. Digital. I was. Okay. Because I was leaving, I wanted to pick it up for the weekend because I was going to visit family last weekend. And I went to Walmart since they opened early before we hit the road. But they had a power outage, so they were closed. And I had to pick it up digitally. We had to, we had to leave. Dang, because well, Walmart, they do, they do cheaper day ones, right? Was WarioWare Yeah, I don't know if they do for WarioWare, which was already cheaper. Yeah. But yeah, so I just got it digitally walmart what are you doing power yeah. outages <laughs> yeah he's like yeah we'll be open soon like noon it was like 8 a.m i'm like that's <laughs> that not, not soon. soon i'm not coming back here in four hours yeah yeah so i'm i'm fine that i went digital i had a ton of coins so i got it actually pretty cheap anyways but yeah nice warioware warioware <laughs> warioware <laughs> zach you gonna pick it up or are you just gonna be playing uh Logan's I copy yeah, I don't see myself picking it up, but it's probably entering the regular rotation of games that Logan and I play whenever we get together. So definitely excited to play more of it. Soon to add Monkey Ball to that list, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. maybe probably. All right. Nice. Do you want to hop into uh, what we got for news this week? Yeah, I think bigger than a lot of the news that we were following is just the Deathloop reviews that came in. Sorry, Zach. <laughs> Man, they're phenomenal. Like, I don't think I really expected how, how much people are loving this game. I did. What, what was the uh, critical reception of the Dishonored games? Was it? Great. They're, they're both very, very well received. Just not, they didn't sell very well. So they're not really that it well known. because it didn't have 12 trailers? I think they just didn't bombard us with enough trailers is the problem. They only showed a couple trailers and then no one bought the game. They weren't going to make that mistake again. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. We delayed it just so we could fit some more trailers in. But yeah, people people are loving it. Zach, uh, what have you seen online and what are your thoughts since uh, you do not currently have a PS4? Yeah, game? I've been looking at some stuff. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to... I, I saw a lot before the game even got <laughs> yeah, released. They kind of showed a lot. So I'm not trying to... <laughs> trying to see the whole game um, before I play it. But yeah, I definitely have been seeing a couple of reviews of people who have really been enjoying it. Um, it is a lot more violent um, than, you know, the, the violence in Dishonored is optional. There's always the low chaos option. So I was expecting something like that. But no, it is just kill everyone in sight because their bodies disappear and there's no consequence because it's just a time loop. So you're, yeah. And I have seen some clear, and the voice acting, I want to say, in particular, stands out. It's absolutely amazing. I don't think I've seen better voice acting in video games than I've seen from the guy who plays Colt and the girl who plays Juliana. They have a lot of chemistry, especially for, like, the handsome Jack Borderlands villain in your ear type of villain. Okay, um, yeah. Who's oh, just constantly yeah, talking at yeah, you. And they're, yeah, they're back, you, yeah. Th they're back and forth. They're just so good. Um, I want to play it so bad. <laughs> 
I don't have a PS5. Oh, God. I, I gotta get a PS5. Yeah, that has definitely put that more on my radar, but... I mean, I, I'm not I'm not in the States right now. What is the current availability of... Uh, That's a, I, I stopped looking Still just as bad as it was before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they better. disappear seconds. Seconds after they're up. That's fun. Xboxes are getting easier, but PlayStations are not. When I got, yeah, when I got my Xbox, it was up for at least 15 minutes. Series S has by far been the yeah. easiest thing to find during all yeah. of this. I saw those <laughs> in the store. That is unprecedented. Which is just super interesting because PS5 Digital, I feel like, has been the hardest to find. Like, those just it's, don't it's exist. really weird. Yeah, especially at the retail level. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense because there's that whole thing of the retailer doesn't want to sell you a console where you would never come back to buy any games from them. And yet, yeah. the Series S, I guess, maybe it's just not as desirable for the mainstream gaming community as the other consoles. I don't know. Well, Walmart would have made one more sale had they uh, had their power not been out. They would have sold one more physical game. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, because it's uh, finding a PS5 here is uh, just as bad. <laughs> it's all just lotteries. Yeah. And I do not it's have just good so luck crazy. with the lotteries. Because at this point, a lot of people do have them. I mean, it's outpacing the PS4 like crazy. And it's I have not two just friends scalpers. who have PlayStation 5s. I do not have a PlayStation 5. And it's just the demand for these things is just so wild. And again, I, I think a lot, a lot, a lot of the um, of the consoles are going into the hands of scalpers too. I mean, like yeah. as as many as they're selling, I'd be very curious how many have passed through the hands of a scalper from point of sale. <laughs> like, yeah, it's gotta be pretty high because that's gotta be the reason why they vanish in a second. It's because they were just bought out by bots half the time. But here's hoping that the new model that came out recently does something to make it a little bit more uh, easy to find probably won't do too much but we'll see yeah zach yeah, what do you, you care about on? death loop at all no i think there would be other games that i pick up on ps5 beforehand um but yeah it'd be something i keep my eye on for the future people do seem to like it a lot and with the the whole kill everybody thing, Dishonored, that's that's like the stealth, right? And I do not like stealth games. And this yeah, one's just yeah, kill everybody, know, and that is a lot more my style for these games. In Deathloop, so yeah. I think stealth is an option, um, but by no means a requirement. <laughs> that's good. That would be a yeah. little bit more up my alley <laughs> than uh, than one of the Dishonored games. So Zach, what are you doing with the PS5? Are you just cutting your losses and and holding out for when it comes out on xbox in a year are you gonna like start up the search again i def okay the the plan currently is not to wait a year to play it on xbox that seems a bit outrageous i think that some point within the next year whenever i do acquire a ps5 the first game i get will likely be Deathloop to try out on my ps5 so whenever I'm just going to hold out. There's plenty of games to play. That's one of the things, too, is that right now I've got a bit of game anxiety because there's so many things to play. And those have been a bit of a, a very helpful distraction in my death loop, you know, desires. <laughs> so hopefully I just I can keep going with the long laundry list of games that I have to play until I can get my hand PS5 and play death loop. I mean, that backlog never disappears. So I don't think you have it to never worry does, about that ever. And now death loop. <laughs> Death Loop's in there. Yep, just, add it to the it's list. It's just in the locked away section where I can't yeah. play it. All right. Well, hopefully you get a PS5 sometime soon. What other news yeah. we got this week, Logan? Doesn't seem like a bunch of earth-shattering news. Yeah. Uh, a weird leak, kind of out of nowhere. Destroy All Humans 2 reprobed a remake getting a leak from the PlayStation Twitter account. There was a full trailer that went up. And then, like, ten minutes later, was just struck down. I watched the trailer before. Oh, really? I didn't removed. even see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I was working at that time, and we were writing it up as if it was announced, and then it just got yanked down, and we're like, oh, well, okay. Change the so, article from uh, from announced, announced to leaked. Announced to leaked, <laughs> yeah. By, it's like uh, when, uh, at E3, when Mario Rabbids, the sequel, was going to be announced, and then Nintendo's just like, hey... <laughs> <laughs> yeah here it is i love so it when like, what because leaks happen so much now but actually happening from playstation is so rare or from nintendo like that one that never happened so that was pretty wild but i mean the game looked cool and kev you played the first remake already right this year i did yeah or 
Yeah, it was this year. I did play the first one. And I'll be down to play this next one when it comes out. The deleted tweet says coming to PS5. Well, I assume it's PS4 as well. Um, but yeah, I've also heard good things about Destroy All Humans 2 from back in the day in the mid-2000s. So I'd definitely be down to check it out when that comes out. And it was... I, I think it was a formality. Um, there was a lot of teasing about it happening from from the developer and publisher. So it's not super surprising that it got announced. More so surprising <laughs> that it was announced by PlayStation and then not. Uh, yeah. Which leads me to be- leads me to wonder when they actually did want to announce it. Like when? Yeah, I feel that the, way too. The, the showcase already happened, so it's got to be its own just YouTube Twitter drop, right? But I guess yeah, that's they didn't what I want thought. To do it I was week. like, when they dropped it on Twitter, I was like, why wasn't this just in the event? Because at that point, the event the event was like three days prior to that, and it's like, why wasn't it just there? But yeah, I guess that they still aren't ready to talk about that officially. I also feel like once they dropped the tweet, why didn't they just leave it? Like everyone knows. Like what is the purpose of? I guess they probably had some deal of when they were going to announce it or the developer knows when they want to announce it, but it's just super strange that they didn't just leave it out there and kind of change their plan. Like when the Xbox series S leaked, it leaked like pictures of it leaked. And then Xbox the next morning after the leak was like, yep, here it is. I'm surprised we didn't see something similar with that. Cause what's even the purpose of waiting to announce it now? Cause it's not going to be a cool surprise announcement. It's going to be like, Hey, you know that thing that you saw the official trailer for already? Here's that trailer again. Yeah. So I don't really get the point of that. Yeah, I guess it has to be um it has to be the, the agreements between publisher and, and Sony. And of course this will be multi platform as well. The yeah, uh, the remake came to Xbox um and recently to Switch as well. So I think it's on know. Game Pass too. I'm pretty sure it's on oh, Game yeah? Pass. I believe yeah. so. Um so maybe there's some inner workings there where <laughs> PlayStation uh screwed up and Decided like, hey, we can pull this out. No one will, no one will remember it. But uh, people did. So now we can just sit here and wait until the official, official release, uh, release of the trailer is. But yeah, from this also no release window or date. So even from this, we do not know when it'll be coming out. But you would assume at at the very latest, mid twenty twenty two or something like that. Can't imagine it's super far off. Hopefully yeah. not early 2022, because it's just going to get buried. Yeah, there's yeah. Some, specifically in February. Don't yeah. don't release it in February. Yeah. Because there's another game that got delayed to that. Um, but I am looking forward to Destroy All Humans too. I'll definitely pick it up at some point when it comes out. Yeah, you could play uh, the first one right now on your Nintendo Switch with the new Bluetooth support, if you want to use some Bluetooth headphones. And the weirdest story, I feel like, in a really long time, so this was weird for a number of reasons. So a new update does give the Switch Bluetooth headphone support. You can't use microphones. You still have to use the Switch app if you want to chat. Hell yeah. But this they just patched it in there. Like, it's just, they just threw this thing in four and a half years after release. How did it take so long? Four and so a half long? years in which people have been asking for this feature. Yeah, it's just wild. I have heard that it's not very good. Oh. that whatever whatever tech is in the switch is not really conducive to that maybe that's why it wasn't there at launch but yeah there's it sounds like there's a lot of lag and for pretty precision based games you're probably not going to want to use it um but hey it is still there i haven't tested it out myself yet but what a bizarre announcement well yeah it's i'm just surprised i didn't think that it'd be a something that they would want to implement earlier it's a handheld console i feel like bluetooth would be very helpful for people on the go Especially considering that nowadays people who have wired headphones and headsets, you know, it's, I think a lot of people are moving over to wireless. I'm just surprised yeah. that they didn't think of this before, and it took them four and a half years to get to it, and apparently it's not that good. Yeah, Zach, have you tested it out yet? No, I haven't tested it out, but uh, I am excited to because I do use Bluetooth headphones quite a lot, and this will give me an excuse to play in handheld mode more because. Right now, the majority of my Switch time is spent docked. I think it's because I, I did see. Yeah. No, yeah, Go you ahead. probably have to play a handheld. Doesn't. All right, Kevin. You, you can do a docked. You can do a docked. Docked. Okay, you can. Oh, you yeah. can do a docked. Okay, I thought it was just a handheld thing. But yeah, just I don't know if it's if it's not if it's a bit laggy then. I don't mm-hmm. think I could do that. But 
Yeah, I saw on Twitter that now the PS Vita was the only one that had Bluetooth support, and that is no longer the case. So the that's Vita's one, one the selling Vita. point is gone. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the, a little sad. The main thing is with like TV play, if you do it, it limits the number of wireless controllers you can use to two. If you're setting up a Bluetooth device with your Switch, I don't think you're expecting to play like a four-player multiplayer yeah, game. Even, probably throw... even two, really. Yeah, but be... two, two. The Joy Cons each count as one, so if you oh. only have Joy Con, you can still use both. Okay, yeah, um, that's true. But yeah, so that's that's interesting. <laughs> um, but here's one thing: it is good for if you like if you have Smash Ultimate and you want to listen to one of those playlists you can put together. They already patched in that feature where you can put your Switch into sleep mode and keep listening to the Smash playlist like like an MP3 player. But now you can like hook up your Switch to a Bluetooth speaker and play a Smash Bros. playlist through that while your Switch is in sleep mode. So that's actually like a weird, cool feature that probably yeah. few people are ever going to actually use. But I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And that doesn't matter if it's laggy because you're in, you're in sleep mode, you're not yeah. playing anything. This reminds me heavily of when Super Mario Party got online support after like a year after its release. <laughs> it's out of <laughs> yeah. nowhere. Just like, Very cool that it's too. here. Why did it take so long? Yep. Yeah. Or now Switch just needs like some some podcast services or something. Yeah, get Spotify on. Yeah, because then you could, you could do the, the same problem. thing. Could do that. I mean, uh, not not necessarily the completely uh, tied to Bluetooth. <laughs> Whereas Netflix, there's just <laughs> there's just certain things with the Switch where you got it, Hulu, it's right? just baffling that it's not there. Yeah, especially when there's like a hundred million of them sold. I do have a theory of why they did this now, though. I think it's because the Switch OLED's coming out in three weeks and they can say supports Bluetooth, which to most people looks like a new feature, like a new thing you can slap on the box. Even though your current Switch model can support it, it's like, hey, this Switch OLED supports Bluetooth, has a LAN port. So the people that missed this update <laughs> think, it, they think they have to buy the, like, oh, this the one OLED model. <laughs> or just new consumers, really. It's just yeah. another nice if you are a new consumer just another box to check to maybe push people over the edge but i do think that it makes the oled look just a little bit fancier and newer if you're like supports bluetooth out of the box on day one but it's just super bizarre especially since it's apparently not very good <laughs> supports bluetooth not good bluetooth <laughs> yeah. a version of bluetooth is what you get yeah i still want to test it for myself though because that's just word of mouth that i've heard that there's some lag so I, I will probably do that within the next week and come back next week. Too. I can test mine right now. I got my Switch right over there with a Bluetooth headset. Yeah, let's I'll see. test it later. Live, live demonstration no. on OD Game. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was a bizarre, bizarre announcement. And the other bizarre thing about it was at like 5.15 p.m. Hmm. And like Nintendo yeah, makes all their announcements in the morning. And it's like 5 in the afternoon. Hey, Bluetooth's on Switch now. They just forgot. And then it's they like, the office, like oh, man, we didn't send the tweet out. Uh, <laughs> uh, what it. if they thought it was in there for the last four years and they're like oh shoot oh we gotta we go just we could have hit, this out we could have hit update five, on that for five four PM. years <laughs> that was supposed to be part of the day one update <laughs> yeah but, but hey it's never. there now <laughs> yeah something that, that fans can stop yelling about to to get added to switch but uh moving on from that one dying light 2 delayed to february 4th this is games like fourth delay it's been delayed a lot. Like Pretty significant delays, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. but just another game added to the February-March onslaught of games. Kind of going to be a rough one. Yeah, I'd be curious yeah. what the what the thought process is for delaying your game specifically to February with everything else happening. You think I mean, I guess they're coming they in front compete. of the other games, so I guess they're hoping that they're going to be That's coming true. in ahead. But man, that that month is packed with stuff. I don't think the uh, I, don't, I don't think Dying Light is gonna cause that much of a splash. I know in people terms like of the original Dying Light reason. a lot. It was this yeah, new it's good. One, I feel like has gotten a fair amount of hype despite all the delays. But yeah, I remember thinking it actually looked interesting. From I feel like that was like two or three E threes ago that we saw it. But it was man, was that an E three I was at? Was this thing revealed in like 2018? Because I feel like it was. The game was announced at E3 2018 during the Xbox press conference. On January, they announced the game would be delayed out of its early 2020 window. 
No new uh, 2020. release. Early 2020. On May oh, 7, 2021, years. a digital event was held, and a December 7th, 2021 release date was revealed. Then it gets delayed to three February of 2022. I love those so, little three-month delays everyone always sticks December, on after a handful January, of previous yeah. months. Well, uh, also this week, Battlefield was just delayed like one month, I think, this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah it's coming out in late November now, and it was, it was supposed to come out in October. <laughs> it's just oh also uh going back to a conversation that we had two three weeks ago now uh there's there's leaks that the next call of duty after vanguard next year is going to be modern warfare 2 oh no why yeah so it's going to be the second get, modern warfare once you get to the numbered entries where it's like there is a second like a You've already got the original reboot that is the exact same name. And then you have a second, like, group of games that also follow the exact same naming conventions. Like, thank goodness God of War isn't just God of War 2. It's God of War Ragnarok. God of War 2, Ragnarok. And, like, like Doom Eternal. The Tomb Raider. Yeah. What what was that one? Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, we don't know what's going to be called that, but I would not be at all if it is. Yeah. That's fun. Anyways, yeah. So more more delays, more delays for that. PS Five getting expandable SSD support in an update. Changed a couple of other UI too. Like the the trophy menu looks different now. Better it looks worse. basically like it looks on PS Four. So better because it looked it. bad on PS Five. Oh. Yeah, so it looks better. But just a couple other things. But hey, I'm excited for that. I will probably invest in some expandable storage soon. How's your storage? Because I'm tired of deleting everything. <laughs> Um, it's okay. I just deleted God of War. <laughs> Wait, you didn't finish it. No, I did not. Oh my because god. Because he got spoiled on the last trailer. He doesn't need to play it. I deleted it, it before care. that. He I deleted it before that and okay. didn't tell either of you. <laughs> I had to I had to do this Shame. weird thing. I had to do this really weird thing for Ghost of Tsushima. Because I had the PS4 version installed. So I had to install the PS5 version before I deleted the PS4 version. So I had two Ghost of Tsushima's on my PS5. You needed this and I needed to delete God of War, but now I have room for it. Like because I deleted the PS4. Well, why would you reinstall God oh, of War? Because you know no, I don't need it. it. Oh man! Yeah. It's like I'll just save the room for Judgment, which I know is coming. Yep, coming soon. The reviews dropped uh, today as we're yeah. recording this, looking pretty good. Yeah. There were some critical reviews in there, but I don't. In terms of its overall review score, it's right around where basically every single Yakuza game slash Not Judgment enough. has been, where it's upper 70s to mid 80s is where i think all of them are really i think that i'm very excited for it. i think the thing that was concerning for me was reading that in this game even more so than the other games in this series it's the side stuff that shines and that the main story was a little underwhelming for a few of the reviews that i read so that's like that's not quite for me because i am just planning to beeline the main story of this thing the first that's still like 30 one of my hours stories yeah it was outstanding it was amazing, and I, I just heard that this one's not doesn't hit quite as hard. But maybe we'll feel differently. We're going to be talking about that game a lot in the coming month. Yep. We will be. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, reviews are out for that as well. It's just a nonstop time right now. So like games. the Death Loop reviews even got me a little interested, and I'm like, nope, I can't do it. I can't do it if right now. You played Death Loop before me. I will be devastated. <laughs> Come play here. Soul crushed destroyed wow does not want to play, play it there i don't want to play it <laughs> ps5 that would be a loss in my mind that's fair that is fair someone else you're gonna play without me delta rune chapter two is, is out now on that your is... birthday zach happy birthday by the way yeah thank you kevin happy, you birthday. Me happy birthday i took note of it in my mind <laughs> it's you not, just did it isn't it's tomorrow, right? <laughs> well, it's today. Yeah, it's... I'm so mixed up on these. It's been my birthday for you for quite a while. It's been here for 90 minutes. Okay, yeah. yeah. We're recording at 1.30 a.m. Pull back the curtain. I, I would be jumping the gun <laughs> on that. Yeah, but... Like, Anyways, Delta Rune's out. Like I mentioned gonna, before, you... I've been having a lot of anxiety the amount of the amount of games that are coming out that I have to play. Um... 
And then Toby Fox out of nowhere is like, Deltarune Chapter 2 after three years, it's coming out in two days. Alright, so I'll be playing that next week. Probably have the whole thing to talk about on the show. I can't imagine it's terribly long. I don't remember how the first one, how long the first chapter was. You can replay the first before you do the second? It has been three years since the first chapter came out. I think I think I remember most of it. Um, but yeah, I, I might do a quick refresher. I'm going to play it with some friends of mine who I, I played high school or I played Undertale in high school with them, and now I've graduated from college and we're playing Deltarune Chapter 2, so that's Is it exciting. free again? Like, the, the first chapter was free. God, See, I don't know. free for all these? Yeah, that's probably why it takes so long to make them. <laughs> what? He probably has a full-time job doing something else. No, he just gets Budget a lot of zero dollars. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If it's not, I won't mind paying a little bit for it, um, depending on how long it is, but yeah. Definitely excited to play it, but like I said, it has come at a difficult time. Um, but definitely excited for it. I've loved Undertale and the first chapter of Deltarune, so definitely excited for more since it has been a crazy long wait. Like, I forgot about this. You know, it's weird because I saw... <laughs> I didn't even see the news, and then I checked on Twitter that Deltarune was trending, and it didn't even occur to me that a new episode was coming out. So I just forgot about it. And then later in the day, I was thinking, man, whatever happened to Deltarune? And then I looked at Twitter and it's like, oh, it's trending because there's a new Deltarune chapter coming. Oh. That was a bit of a roller You never know with Twitter, though. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes exactly. that stuff's trending be, and it means nothing. It could have been trending for literally no reason, so. I think it's free. I haven't found anything that said it's not. And it comes right. out today. It comes out in like 12 hours from yeah. when we're recording. And they have like an FAQ on the website and there's nothing that says like, is it free? Like, the question is, how do I transfer my save? How do I do this? So, I, th- okay. I don't know. I think it's free. We'll yes, see, we'll see tomorrow or today. Yeah. We will. So, Delta Rune is the same, like, characters with the same names, right, as Undertale, but totally different universe. Is that right? The, the main characters um, are all new. So, Chris and the, her friends, his friends, I think. Uh, yeah, the the townspeople that surround the main characters are characters from Undertale. I believe they have the same names, but they all have like jobs, like Alpha and Undyne's like a police officer. So um, I killed Undyne. I like Undyne. <laughs> I actually really like Undyne. But yeah, it's we don't really know why that is. We don't know a whole lot. The first uh, chapter just gave more questions than answers. So hopefully we'll get some answers this. Who knows? Yeah, they say that more are planned after two, so this is not oh, even it. Yeah, exactly. Twenty twenty four is going to be a great. Yeah, uh, oh, the episodic is a little bit harder to follow when the episodes are three three years <laughs> instead of a yeah. month. Yeah. Which, by the way, is not the case for God of War. Uh, Ragnarok's wrapping up this the story of the reboot. They're not doing a trilogy. It's a duology, which is yeah. rare nowadays. But yeah, I guess if Ragnarok's Never. coming, that makes. They're just saying it took too long. Yeah, pretty much. Like we don't want people to wait fifteen years for a uh, for a trilogy. And there was there was one quote in there that was really interesting to me, where they said the first game took five years to make. I don't know how long this one's going to end up being, but probably a similar amount. So I'm like, are you saying it's delayed to 2023 already? Is that what you're telling me? I guess That's maybe it was in the planning quote. stages before the first one came <laughs> yeah, out. It's maybe? been three years. Yeah, I don't know because it was April 2018. So they're like, we don't know how long it's going to end up taking. You should have four and a half years, <laughs> but instead, we don't know. That was extremely non-committal. Yeah, I'm I was scared. <laughs> I was seeing that, and I was like, oh yeah, two games and ten years. It's like, yeah, fifteen's a long time. And then for a split second, I was like. No, but Yakuza was doing that for a long time. Like, wait a minute. They made a new game every single year, and they made seven games in, like, the same <laughs> yeah. span of time. It's like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes a little bit more sense for God of War. Fifteen years for one set of story is uh, is a fair amount of time. Yeah, it's like if they have a Last of Us Part 3. It's already been eight years since the first Last of Us. So if they if they do keep it going, man, that's, that's a long time to span. Yeah. This games just take so dang long now. Yeah, you don't have, like, before in the last couple of generations, you could pump out, like, three, four games on one console. But now especially with, like, PS4, 
PS5 and Xbox One and Series X and S, like, man, you're lucky to get one or two out on there. They just take so you know, much I was, I was thinking about that with Halo. It's like, man, we got Halo 1 and 2 on Xbox. Then 3 ODST Reach and 4 on the 360. And then 5 on the Guardians. Xbox One. Yeah. Like, oh boy. And I know Infinite's coming out to 1 also. I mean, if you're just looking at like exclusives, part of that generation. I feel like I feel that way with every series. Like I look at, I, I was thinking about that with Zelda. Also. The gap with every 3D Zelda is getting like a year longer every time. Like it was like three years between Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. Then it was like five years between Twilight and Skyward. And then six years between Skyward and Breath of the Wild. You just got to keep one upping and they got to keep getting bigger. Yeah, Yeah. 24. Let's go. It's crazy. It's like Breath of the Wild too. Like in our lifetimes, how many more of these like tentpole franchise entries are there going to be? Like pretty like further down, it's going to be like one a decade. I mean, it basically already is. Like, yeah, it's it's crazy. Well, for Grand Theft Auto, yeah. And that's why yeah. I'm a Yakuza fan is because I can, while I'm waiting for all these other games, I know one of my series is going to be rolling up every single year. How many Yakuza's have come out in the span of GTA 5 to, G- oh. to now? several all, all of them what yeah. uh five zero six seven judgment uh fist the of the North star isn't uh, the kiwami games uh the remasters of all the other ones i know fist of the north star isn't a yakuza game but it's basically one of them several <laughs> that is fantastic yeah several and now lost judgment <laughs> but yeah, yeah with some of these big series like I get it. Yeah, 15 years for one set of story. It just... That's a long time. And it's like, what's your ideal length between entries in a franchise? Like... Because for me, like, I mean, Yakuza upholds quality from entry to entry, but, like, Pokemon burned us out from being every year. So it's like, I don't know, like, every three years to three me years is, is like... Three years is a... That's a good. good window. Yeah, I anything like. beyond that, it's like, that's a long wait, and Anything prior to that, it's like, I'm questioning the quality. Look <laughs> yeah, what happened when Sonic crazy. annualized. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, yeah, not great. But yeah, these games are just taking so long. Anyways, uh, we got a couple other stories here. Gran Turismo 7 is going to be always online. That's a nice series. It's the it's the first mainline Gran Turismo in like eight years? Nine years? It's been a long wow. time. And the one on PS4 was, I think, kind of just a stopgap title. Uh, yeah yeah i and, think and for... fans are angry about this by the way uh gran turismo is going to be online connection which it's... people don't like and i look at it more so as as the legacy of these games like in the short term that's really not going to matter too much like the internet will be fine it's just what happens when they decide hey we're not going to support this anymore because we've seen it so many times where once the game is where they don't deem it viable to keep all the servers up they just take them down and then the the game is either unplayable or is a just a skeleton of the original game because i think what it said was arcade is the only mode yeah. that is not going to be always online and so you think about like what's going to happen 10 15 years from now if i want to play gran turismo 7 is the only thing i'm going to be able to play <laughs> the arcade mode yeah and then the game with so much custom mode. content too yeah. Custom cars, custom everything. Yeah, the video of in the, the news car pretty recently. Little Big Planet. Detail. They were taking the servers down for Little Big Planet on PS3, right. and all of those user created levels, you won't be able to download them anymore. Yeah, and that stuff just sucks. So, yeah, never like to see it when uh, <laughs> when games are always online, especially for games yeah. where a lot of it you, you wonder why. Like a lot of this stuff's probably single player, but yeah. I remember last week we were talking about simulation racing games and we we were kind of talking about how if we wanted to do it, the series like Game Pass would be the way to go because it has both Forza Motorsport and Forza Horizon. And then the next day after the podcast, I was watching a video of all the games leaving Game Pass and it was like Forza Motorsport. So it's gone well, now. I we mean, can't. Forza specifically, those games are delisted within three years or so. It's just yeah. however Wait, long Forza they Motorsports leaving. Yeah, yeah it's, gone. it's getting fully delisted. Seven. Because, 
Yeah. Yep. When? This month. I don't remember exactly, but oh, I know God. it was reaching I end of buy life. That. Yeah. Is it cheap? I gotta buy that. Uh, when yeah, Forza Horizon leaving, 3 was leaving, they made all the DLC and everything very cheap to give you one last chance to get it. Because that's, um, that's like the only way right now you can race indie cars in a video game on Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it's super cool. Although they are making an indie car game that's coming next year. It's like the first official one ever in like 30 years. Like wow. it's been a really long time. Like they make like a NASCAR game every year. IndyCar hasn't forever. They had a really crappy shovelware Indianapolis 500 Legends game. I played on the Wii. That thing was terrible. <laughs> so maybe, maybe that'll fix it. But no, I played Forza Motorsport on my PC because, yeah, you could race in Indy cars and it was super cool. But yeah, Dude, with I all missed the Forza that. Games, I didn't know I was going to be listed. Whether it's Motorsport or Horizon, always keep up to date on those. Um, I assume that uh, Forza Horizon 4 doesn't have a ton of time left, especially with 5 coming out. So, I gotta finish that. Yeah, I know. I gotta finish it too. Always just, just keep your eye on it, and when it does reach end of life, if you really do, if you think you're gonna ever play it again, pick it up while it's on sale. Yeah. Yeah, and they the, always thing, do that. Is it still downloadable if you purchase it, or is it gone? It's gone. Wait, right, no, no. If you purchase it, you still have access. Okay, because I was gonna say on a digital only console, we're still gonna be able to download. Like if, if you, I just if go you and own buy it, it, you can still access it. I yeah. think it's just wiped from the store. That's yeah. just so weird. No no other medium does this. I mean, I know that Disney like the vault. And they're like, it's going in the vault. I mean, but there's it, still ways to watch everything. Yeah. With Forza, it really is just the car licenses. Yeah. They pay for the licenses for a certain amount of time. And it, I guess paying for them again, especially when you have a new game that you're going to have to pay for the licenses on top of the old ones, just wouldn't be as viable. Yeah. But still yeah. doesn't suck any less. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah, so if you want Motorsport, uh, the more recent one, before the new one comes out, uh, pick it up soon. Yeah. Yep. Our last story of the day here is about Bayonetta 3. This was announced in 2017. It's January of 2017, and it's still not here. Uh, and basically, the, the directors say it's coming along well. They say it's not up to them when to show it. They want to show it also. So basically, that implies it's Nintendo's choice of when to show it. But they say that there no need to worry; they're ready to show it. But then the voice actress for Bayonetta is saying that she doesn't know if she's going to voice the character in the series, uh, saying that people fans saying we can't imagine the series without you, and her responding, "You might have to." It's like, what does? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if that means she's already recorded for Bayonetta three and maybe beyond that, but. Who knows where that game is even at? Yeah, and that comment of Nintendo has decided not to show it is then the question is why? Because I don't know. I feel like there were times that they could have fit that in and yeah, made people really absolutely. happy. But I, I wonder what Nintendo saw. They were like, ah, we're not going to show that off right now. Or like just the reasoning behind not showing it off. Because it yeah, has been Nintendo so long. is, they're so forward focused. It was. The Switch was such an era. The, the launch of the Switch was like a Hail Mary moment for them, right? So I feel like they did a lot of things they don't normally do. They, they showed logos, which they never do. Ever. Like, showing the Metroid Prime 4 logo and the Bayonetta 3. Shimagami and I guess the, was the same? Yeah, yeah, that was the same too. Those were all in 2017, when the Switch was about to come out or had just come out. Very different from what they normally do. The only thing that's come even close to that since then is Breath of the Wild 2, but that was still a teaser trailer. Bayonetta was literally a logo, and I've never, I haven't seen ever do that before. So I feel like now they're just focused on fall lineup for 2021 and then spring lineup for 2022. So if this, if Bayonetta 3 is a summer or fall game next year, I think it falls in line with their strategy that they wouldn't show it right now. I don't think that's necessarily a cause of concern for the game because that's just kind of what they do. They're always like, the next thing. Wario took over their social media for a month. Now he's gone already and it's Metroid focus. Then after that, it'll be Pokemon. And then hopefully Advance Wars. I hope they push that game. But then yeah. Pokemon again and whatever's <laughs> coming next. They're always about the Pokemon. next thing down the line. So I don't think it's a cause to worry. I just think that they... Like, I wonder if the game had even started development when they showed that three. Or if it was like, we're making it. Or <laughs> the deal was signed that, hey, you guys <laughs> yeah. make this game. And they're like, okay. And they're like, thank God we yeah. made that trailer already. Yeah. <laughs> Need to show it off. 
Yeah. Yeah. And now now you wonder like what's going on with the voice actor. Yeah, she's really gonna, weird. She's gonna be there or not. Um but that leads into uh our O2 for this week. We've been off for a couple of weeks. We're back on it this week. And it's game release timing. So from reveal to release, the ideal amount of time uh that that you want to see from when the game is first shown off, that first teaser, whatever it is, to when the game actually uh the game actually releases. Uh don't be cyberpunk. That was nine years. <laughs> oh my god. Uh so yeah, what is was your guys' optimal reveal to release time window? Is it right away, like it's launching later today, or is it like you want to build up like six months to a year, or, or are you going the the long haul? Yeah. I'm thinking. I think I don't know. I think before a couple days ago, I wouldn't have said immediate drop, but after the the Delta Rune, oh, that's exciting. I kind of forgot about. It. I guess we definitely expected a chapter two, but just, I think it's easy to, I would like an announcement that something is happening and then absolutely nothing until right before. Cause I want to know that something is happening, but I don't want to think about it. I don't want constant trailers reminding me of death loop. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so I, I think ideally I don't really care how long, long it takes i just want to know that something is happening and then i want to forget about it do other stuff and then boom it's coming out day after tomorrow get excited if you have a ps5 or whatever is that why dishonor didn't sell well <laughs> dishonor didn't sell well because people are stupid Ooh, whoa and i'm not Some big words this there <laughs> anyone who hasn't played dishonored i don't even... logan that's us yeah i know yeah, yeah. Take a hint. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I've just lost a lot of faith over the years, right? Like, the I, I'm, I think what matters more to me than release timing is once you say a date, no, you're gonna hit it. I'm a big fan and, of that. I, like, how confident do you have to be? People are putting out dates with clearly zero confidence that they're gonna hit them. I don't know why. Yeah, and it's like, uh, to go back to Nintendo again, that's one thing that I love that they do. They, they push games all the time. Absolutely. But once there's a firm date, it is not moving. Like, Metroid was announced for October. Not a seed of doubt in my mind that it was day. Or that it's still going to come out that day in, in a couple weeks. But it's like, you just see all these games, it's like, ah, oh, we need two more weeks, we need three more weeks. And it's just like it's just ruining the trust of the customers. And it's just like, I, I really dislike. It. So I, I kind of agree with Zach announce, Hey, we're working on this. And then, yeah, give us, give us some updates if it's a long-term project, but don't give me a hard date until you have a hard date. Windows are fine, but like the last of us, which had three actual dates four, yeah, three or four actual dates. It's like, that's, that's not cool with me. That really bugs me do that yeah as long as they don't push they have a date and then just push their developers to work on it to make sure that they hit yeah. that first date that they have yeah or the game is unfinished and broken it's like just just wait to announce your date yeah i feel like for the day the the surprise drop most games can't do that i feel like that's a lot of smaller titles or indie games where they probably wouldn't have gotten a bunch of fanfare if they released the concept and then they updated us and then the game came out. I think a lot of those games get really hyped from that. Hey, it's out and you can go try yeah. it now as compared to something from a larger publisher or one of the big publishers where you do need at least, you know, five or six months to, to get people hyped up for it. Um, yeah. But I think, I think that is, that is my window. Six months to a year is, uh, is pretty good for me. We're like the opposite games. <laughs> Well, I just expect them to come out. I don't even need, like, they'll be out eventually. Um, but, yeah, and just going back to Cyberpunk and games like that, I don't I don't really care if if all you know is that you're working on something. That's, that's very meaningless to me. Like, they really should have shown it off for the first time at the very – earliest in 2018 when they actually had something to show off 
Like the fact yeah. that they showed up five years prior with some tra- teaser trailer and then people just completely forgot about it for five years. It's just like, why'd you even do that? Yeah. Like, I don't know. That and it's like, I don't ridiculous. think, I don't think that a game's, I understand there's investors that you need to please and you need them to know that you're working on something that people are eventually going to buy. But in terms of a game sales or hype cycle or marketing campaign, you see successful marketing campaigns all the time of games that are announced and released within the same year. I mean, like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was announced in March, launched in December, and is the best-selling fighting game of all time. And there was less than a year of hype buildup for that. Some of these games, it's like, yeah, I know that you want to people to buy the system too, is another thing, right? So you announce like God of War Ragnarok at the PS5 event in June of 2020, and that might not come out till 2023. Did we really need to know about it back then? I don't know if a lot of people were pushed to pick up a PS5 because Ragnarok is coming eventually. I feel like Horizon, which is coming very soon, or Spider-Man or other things like that, Miles Morales meaning, I feel like those are enough to push people. I, I don't know. And if if Ragnarok is what pushes so many people over the edge, then they will pick up a PS5 in a year when it's more readily available, which it's still not. So it's, I just don't think we need these tales of like three to four years of marketing a game anymore. It's just It's just really exhausting after a certain point. And like Deathloop, I know that the pandemic was a special situation, but seeing a trailer for that thing so many times we were all fatigued by it. And then the reviews drop and it's getting nines and tens left and right. And you're like, man, if this thing was announced like a a year ago and then like had two trailers and then the reviews, I think people would feel just as good about it as they do with maybe even better than with the campaign that it did because of how many dang trailers it had. Yeah. Also, I will say... I think a good barometer of whether you should show your game off or not is if you actually have something to show. I'm thinking about <laughs> the game at the Microsoft conference. It was like contraband or something where it was what just like the was trailer that, of the garage the and then the logo. I'm like, what, <laughs> what even was that? I don't know what that game yeah. is. I don't like story trailers. CG story trailers are bad enough where it's very hard to gauge what the game's actually going to be. That was, <laughs> that wasn't anything yeah. like if that's all you have, just hold off. Like, I don't, I don't need to see it yet. Especially for a new IP. Yeah. If it's like, yeah, God of War 2 with a logo, that is so much more meaningful because people have something to link it back to. If it's just like this word and this garage, you're like, this means absolutely nothing to me. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But I feel like we're just going to be getting more and more of this because like we were saying earlier, games take longer and longer to develop. And yeah, I feel like a lot of companies don't want to be radio silent on what they're working on for so long. Like they want to have something tangible mm-hmm. to show off. And then yeah. the length of the development cycle probably means that the, the odds of them having to delay it are much higher than used to be. Mm-hmm. And I just think you want to get to the point where you're never tired of seeing these games. Like we were so tired of seeing like days gone. Yep. Oh my God, we saw that everywhere forever. And it, it was just terrible. You don't want and to I honestly, a joke. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited, very excited for the Wolverine game, but that thing didn't even have a year. That did not even have a year. Yeah. Spider-Man 2 is coming out first and it's not even coming out next year. So Wolverine is like 2024, probably. That's, that's a good estimate, oh, I'd say. That just, that's three years? Like, what are we doing at that point? Like, I get it was their big showcase, but would people have thought that wasn't a successful showcase without Wolverine? With Spider-Man and Knights of the Old Republic and everything else they had, I think people still would have walked away from that pretty happy. But instead, it was like, Wolverine, and if that thing's not coming out till fall 2024, it's going to be a long haul. Well, well, going back to that PlayStation yeah. showcase, so many of those games just didn't have any release dates, windows, anything. It was just like... yeah. It got yeah, to the point for some of those where I was of. like, "Is there it. supposed to be something there?" Like, they need to show if they're gonna show it off or reveal something, they should at least give a window. Yeah. Like, it's did not... God of War even say 2022 at the end? I don't think no. it did. I guess they learned their lesson after the last one. <laughs> but then you had, you had the weird thing where, like, like we talked about last week, they weren't even showing the dates in the video, and they were like on the PlayStation blog, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that PlayStation's the worst offender of this 
Like, you look at the PS4 generation, it was just defined by those four games we saw three years in a row. And then they all came out, and now here we go again with Wolverine, Star Wars, God of War. Like, it's just the stuff we're going to see over and over and over until it's all. And then they'll set it up again. Yep, keep doing it. It's like, I much prefer the model that I just was talking about with Nintendo of the next thing. Hey, Metroid's next. We're going to talk about that and not much else. Yeah, sometimes it's frustrating to not know the long-term plan. But if you know, like, one project that's coming, like Zelda, I think you feel good about that. And it also can allow for better presentation. Nintendo's Direct at E3 killed because it revealed so much we had never seen before, like Metroid and Wario and Advance, the stuff that's all coming this year. And when you, can get when excited you have that power, now. exactly. Mm-hmm. When you have that power and you can be like, hey, it's the first new 2D Metroid in 15 years and it's coming out in four months. That's a bombshell. That's way more than like Metroid coming Metroid in Prime. four years, <laughs> coming which in they've knows. done too, Yeah, which is a joke now. Metroid Prime 4 is a joke. Yeah, the logo reveals are terrible and should never happen again, ever. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you, we don't need to know about that yet. Come back in a little while once you have something to show that's more than a garage. So where's Final Fantasy sixteen? Oh, well, yeah. I saw a lot of people have said that that thing had shown at the state of play. Yeah, I really Just thought it was need another to. game that doesn't have a date. They already had so many of those. It was supposed to come out this year. <laughs> Yeah, well, God of War Ragnarok that. was supposed to be what? <laughs> 20, yeah, this year 20, also. 2021. Just like, yeah. nope. All right. Zach, I guess we're throwing it to you for the last bit of show here. What we've been playing. All right. Well, I'll do it for our O2 segment. I guess we'll quickly go through what we've been playing this week. I'll go first since I know for me it's just been a, the same old stuff I talked about last week. A little bit more. I haven't had a lot of uh, to play anything over the last week, I think busy but i did play the second episode of life is strange true colors uh, i don't have a lot of new impressions on that still really liking it i think so far it might be on track to be my favorite in the series um, i like the characters a lot i am still kind of upset how much the trailers gave away in terms of what the story is like the main story beat that the trailers gave away for the plot is like not even revealed until the end of the episode so that's a whole episode where you just know what's going <laughs> And you, you see it coming. And it's it, so lame. It's kind of lame, but uh, still really liking it. So I hope it didn't have too big of an effect. But At least you have all the episodes, so it wasn't like, oh! Exactly. Yeah. It's like, wait I just played the months. trailers. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Time to wait a month. Yes, definitely a big fan. They, they decided to drop the whole thing at once. So that's a step in the right direction. And I played a little bit more of Trials and Tribulations Case 2. Um, I haven't sat down and had my big, like, go through one case a day like I did with the first two games. I think I got, other than being busy, I think I got a little burnt out on that case. I'm actually really enjoying it so far. It's the first non-murder case, I assume, because there hasn't been a murder as of yet. It's just a theft, a thievery. Um, so, that's exciting. New stuff. I forgot there were other crimes other than murder. <laughs> Only murders. No yeah, other crimes like, I, guess, I guess it's just murder. That's fun. And then Logan and I sat down, played a little bit more, played a couple more of the levels, still having a good time with that. Looks great. Looks so good. It does. Halo Reach always looked very good. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Compared to Halo 3, which looks absolutely terrible. We did the really cool mission on the ship in space where it's like zero grav combat. Oh, and yeah. Really like that. Yeah, it turned into Star Fox for a little while where we were. Yeah, uh, like, I didn't we love the ship spaceships. combat. It was I did not love that. Unplayed. I hit an antenna and exploded one time. Nice. <laughs> we slammed into each other and both died. <laughs> yeah. That's how the Spartans yeah, but... do it. <laughs> exactly. Highly coordinated. <laughs> they're Spartan 3s, so they're slightly worse than what Master Chief is. <laughs> no excuse. Lost another one hitting into that pole. We got to get rid of that. Yep. So, how definitely much more time a lot of you fun. have before Guardians? I don't know, because after this, we got. We got so much. We abandoned It Takes Two. I have also abandoned Divinity. I, oh, yeah. I forgot you were playing that. have not picked it up either. Oh, no, yeah. I forgot, yeah. <laughs> Look, that, just, that one point, we like, yeah. the rest of the game was fine. Starring. 
it, that that one point like is legitimately messed up. Is that what turns you off from the game? Honestly, it's, oh wow, it's upsetting. It <laughs> upsetting moment. I mean, the the story wasn't near on the level that a way no, out it was. was terrible. And then that moment, I was just like, "What is this? Like, what just happened?" And the gameplay's not good. It's boring. Yeah, it's yeah. sad. It, it a way out is like miles better. It's to me, it almost feels like they should have come out in the opposite order. Like they tried it with it takes two. Yeah, that was like the proof of concept everything. or something. Yeah. Where it was like, okay, yeah. I can see where you're going with this. We need to, yeah. to see the uh, the improvements. Yeah, but instead, the hype cool. level was so big for it. Like, yeah, it did not hit. And then Divinity we abandoned. And then... Well, shelved. Yeah, shelved. We're going back. And then great game. Halo. I don't want to play Halo 5, but we have to. I have yeah, You are Halo obligated. I, I, yeah. I do have to play it. <laughs> yeah. As Xbox players now. Yeah, apparently. Gotta play all the Halo yep. games. <laughs> Is that it for you, Zach? Yeah, that, that's done it for me this week, I think, for the most part. So we'll move on to Logan. Anything oh, I, I can go quickly. Aware? It's just Xenoblade. Okay. Oh, Future Connected. Oh, yeah. Fair um, enough. Still a good time. Uh, like I said last week, I appreciate some of the changes that they've made to some of the balancing that uh, makes it better for a shorter play session. You know, you're starting at a higher level. Um, yeah, it's gorgeous again. Uh, I really like the world. Although, I feel like the map is worse because I felt like in, in the base game, it did a very good job of differentiating between the levels because like, you can go to like the second or third levels of these places because there's a lot of verticality in the maps. But here, there is no label of where it is. So sometimes you'll fast travel to a point and you're like, oh wait, that was under this other spot. That is actually on top of it, but you don't see it on the map, and there's no way to see mm -hmm. it actually on the map, which is weird. Especially because they got it right in the base game. It came out years ago. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's gorgeous. Like the characters, like spending more time with them, um, like the new world that we're in. Um, and yeah, I appreciate some of the changes that they've made. I really like the uh, Nop on Prospector people that you can recruit to uh, to do special attacks with instead of the chain attacks. I think that's been a lot of fun and adds more stuff to do in the world of finding them and doing their quests but yeah it's a good time don't know how much more time i have left with it i'm about eight hours in i think doing most of the content will probably clock in around like 15 to 20 so probably be done in the next week or two which i have to be because lost judgment's coming out and <laughs> yep a week it's the race oh and i still don't have a ps5 and I'm assuming, I didn't look into it, but I'm assuming that it's going to be the same situation as like a dragon where they're like, oh, you want to carry your save over? No. No. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. looking forward to that. But yeah, that's all I've been up to. Logan, what you got? Eastward. I've been playing Eastward. Hey, so that, so yeah. that came out the other day. Yeah, I am uh, actually writing the guide for IGN. So I got it a few days ago. Is that your first time writing first... a guide? Yes, it is. How's that experience? It's really overwhelming. <laughs> because oh, the guy, you have to like be, you know, that you have to look at every out. nook and cranny of those yeah. games. Yeah. Uh huh. And it sucks because there's like one area where I just got to this new area. I investigated this like thing in the wall, and then it was like a secret wall, and it like flipped over, and then it triggered a boss fight. I, I was like in the secret cavern, triggered a boss fight. I could never go. Oh. <laughs> So oh. I missed like an area for the guide, and I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> I'm you gonna have restart, to like go back. right? Do you have yeah. like, are there like There's, save? Yeah, file is there like a lot of where you can like save file? your progress? Yeah, yeah, there are, but I didn't right. really know the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. So because there it does auto save, I should have gone back and checked. But my last save was like two hours ago because the save points are really spread out, and I was like, I'm not. I can't. See, well, at yeah, the very that. least, now you've learned for the guide, you write before the before that encounter. You're like, don't do not, go into the yeah, do not click on this. I did write that until well, you're done with the previous area. But you got to explore. Yeah, I did. I did write. Like that for example, when yeah. I was playing through Xenoblade, they had multiple instances where some areas were locked off, and I had to use a guide to know when those were. So uh, uh -huh. for people reading the guide after the fact, it's very helpful. It's not. Yeah. So. It's, it's hard to gauge as much how I feel about the game since I am having to uh, do it for work. Yeah. Because um, playing a game for a guide is not for fun. It no. is very much <laughs> work. Meticulous. Um, like, yeah. Playing through it, yeah. So 
but it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous to look at. It's that modern pixel art style, which I really love. I don't love pixel art that acts like it's restrained to the consoles it's inspired by. I love pixel art that is just, it's on a modern console and it's doing what it can with it. And it's just absolutely beautiful. The worlds are super interesting. It's this post-apocalyptic world where humans have moved underground because on the surface. And so you're just in this like underground society that no one really knows if the surface world is a real thing is kind of the central mystery. And if you talk about it or try to visit it, you basically get banished from society. So it's it's setting up a lot of interesting themes. But so that's really cool. The story is interesting. The worlds are great. Um, the I'm just a little disappointed by the puzzles and combat so far because it is a Zelda like it's trying to be like a 2D Zelda in its dungeons but they're just not as complex. The dungeons are very linear and combat is very one note. You basically have a frying pan and you just whack everything with it. In later chapters, you do unlock more weapons. Like there's some guns, and other, other things you get. But for now, it's just very simple. I'm hoping as I get further into more chapters, it, it picks up a little bit because the style and the story and the music's outstanding. It's just lacking a little bit in the gameplay department. So, but Definitely Earthbound and Zelda matched up into one. Very cool idea. Like the story so far. And yeah, I'm I'm gonna have it done this time next week because that's what I need to for the guide. So I'll talk about final thoughts okay. for it next week. But that's what I'm gonna be doing most of the next week is playing through that. Nice. Yeah, I've uh I'm gonna keep my eye on that. Don't have time for it now, but I definitely put it on the wish list on on the Switch to, to play. Yeah, right now I'd say it's not a must play, especially if you're not like a super big Earthbound fan. I know you haven't played it, Kev. Like it's it's not as special as I wanted it to be so far. Hmm. Um, Guess but we'll it is week. good. You know, yeah, it's a good time so far. I'm hoping that it can elevate into something really cool. And it's yeah. nice. Anything else? Yeah, uh, there's Pokemon Oreos that uh, I thought were, were, oh, okay. would be fun to mention <laughs> because we used to talk about Oreos on another show we did back in the day it's, yeah but it's true they're just standard cream they're they're no they're not any special flavor but there's 16 different pokemon and uh, you want to collect them all and like the rarest one is mew and they're like engraved on the whoa and can you tell on the outside so if you go to the store you could find a mew or is it a no surprise? it's a surprise so i want to buy a pack and see what pokemon i get mm. i've not done it yet but are you gonna <laughs> keep those as long as you kept those birthday oreos that you kept them oh, that was bag. disgusting. <laughs> yeah, but you got to collect them all. Oh, it's like, how do boy. people know if you collected them if you don't have them? Yeah, that's true. You, like, display that's them true. in a case. They don't really mold their Oreos. <laughs> it's like, don't eat them. They're 10 years old. Gross. Nice. That's well, all. You have to pick them up and uh, show, like, unbox it on the show next week. <laughs> Unpackage. I should. Oreos. Yeah, we'll I should do that. Deal. See what we got. See yeah. what Pokemon we got. Sell them you on eBay for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> the way the Pokemon trading card market is, man, maybe the Pokemon Oreo market will also be kicking off. But yeah, wouldn't every one have a Mew on it? No, the pack. It's not the packaging. It's the cookie itself. <laughs> yeah, but every cookie would have Mew on it. No, no, they're like mixed. They're random. Oh, yeah. So you oh could get God. like one Mew. What if I accidentally eat it? People are selling Mews for forty-two dollars on eBay. Is the can you can you send that into VGA to get graded? Grade my Oreo. <laughs> but they are pretty cool engravings. You can see it here. Like cool. I'll, I'll look. They have the name. <laughs> they have the name engraved on it above, and like cool art of the Pokemon. So it's kind of cool. Those are actually pretty cool. Yeah. Well, looking forward to that next week. Yeah, Pokemon Mew. Okay, well, I think we've gone on long enough for this episode. That is going to do it for us on this week's episode of Ode to Games. We're here on Thursdays or Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, other podcast streaming services that you may use. Odegames.com also has the audio version of the podcast. The video version is on YouTube at Odegames, so you can check out the video version there. We're on Twitter at Odegames, Twitch Odegames as well. You can send an email to Odegamescast at gmail.com. For Logan and Zach, I'm Kevin. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next week.